All right, welcome to another video in our Kids Love Golf series. The question is, Craig, you've been speaking uh, about a lot of generalities. Let's get specific for my kids. What do they need? Do they need a full set of clubs? Do they need golf shoes? Do they need to wear gloves? Do they need one glove for their left hand or one for their right? Or do they need both? Okay, well, golf is cool that way, right? There's countless numbers of pieces of equipment out here. What I've got here for you to take a quick peek at, what's in Tony Finau's golf bag, right? Now, the reason why I bring this up is because take a peek over here. Saber Golf putting ruler. Uh, very happy that that Tony had that in the bag. Uh, he picked it up at the PGA Championship at Beth Page, and uh, I've known Tony for a long time. This is what Tony's got in the bag. He's got some chalk for a string line. He's got a couple of golf balls that are black and white. Some alignment sticks. He's got a um, putting string, gloves, laser range finder. He's got a wrench to, to adjust his driver, uh, and obviously his golf clubs, a cool putter cover, another putting training aid right here. So when you think about what goes into a tour player's golf bag, there's a lot of stuff. I forgot about the umbrella and the tees and the KT tape over here. But when, there, when you look in a golfer's bag, I've got my bag sitting right here. If I were to open it up, I've got everything I would need, including some snacks, including my favorite, Pedialyte, right? So I like to have Pedialyte packets, dump them in my water to keep my electrolytes up. All joking aside, when you're talking about your brand new golfer, okay? Tennis shoes, some type of running shoe is fine. Please make sure that they're closed toed, right? Think about PE in school, uh, any type of activity where your kids are running around. The closed toed nature is for a few different reasons. One, um, there's stuff out there, trees, tree roots, other kids, golf balls, clubs, concrete, anything around the golf course that a kid could stub their toe on. And it's closed toed also because we're out in the elements. Uh, it could be raining. Um, the ants could get into some sandals, right? So try to keep them closed toed. A lot of golf shoes are actually made with a waterproof material because we spend a lot of time walking through wet grass. If it's raining, we definitely want to keep our toes protected because there's nothing worse than getting wet feet, okay? So that wraps up the closed toed running shoe, tennis shoe, something like that. Something comfortable, okay? Um, blisters. You want to protect against blisters because you're moving. You're actually going to be spinning and turning your body in a different way. And so sometimes the rubbing on the heel will cause blisters, right? So if you know that's the case, you can use that white athletic tape. You can pick it up at a, a, a pharmacy like a Walgreens or CVS. Put a little bit of extra tape around the back of the heel of your little golfer. Put the sock on over that. Provides another layer to stop the blisters from the heels. Um, when you're looking at the, the shoe itself, try not to get something that's, that's very high in the heel. If they have a very high heel, which is good for like impact for running, a lot of times it tips the golfer up on their toes a little bit. So, um, cool looking fancy shoes that maybe have a heel in them, probably not the best for golf. You want to keep those more flat soled. Um, if the sole of the shoe has just a slight little texture to it, that's good. You don't necessarily need like a bunch of spikes, deep spikes. <clears throat> In fact, when you're dealing with little kids, it's better that they don't have spikes because if they take off and run across a putting green, with tennis shoes, they're not gonna damage it. If they are wearing golf spikes and they're in that age group where they're just like having fun and running around, you're gonna be more scared that they're gonna damage the golf course. So even though little kids golf shoes are super cute, I wouldn't be buying little kids golf shoes because then what happens is you have to tell the kid don't run. And if you have to tell the kid stop running around, that means you're telling them to stop having fun, right? So if they take off running across the green, you might, you know, tell them a little story about, hey, the grass is tiny. You don't want to damage the grass. You have to walk on it carefully. That's just a good way to kind of start communicating some of the etiquette for golf.
but you definitely don't want to cause them embarrassment to the point where they don't want to be there. Okay, so that's the shoe. The sock, you want to make sure that's also there to help you with uh, preventing blisters. Oh, we're in the elements again, so we're dealing with the sun. If, you're, if your kiddo hasn't been out in the sun very much, you might get them some little golf pants, right? Like an Under Armour or a Lululemon type thing where it's stretchy pants. Um, not necessarily like uh, sweatpants, although some sweatpants are going to be fine at a lot of golf courses. But you want to make sure that their little legs are protected from the sun. And we know how they hate putting on sunscreen. And they're moving and swinging. The sunscreen tends to get rubbed off anyway. And sunscreen can be kind of a problem a little bit on the grips of the clubs. You know, if they take their club and they put it on their arm like this and they got sunscreen on it and then all of a sudden they get sunscreen on the grip and then it gets on their hands, it gets slippery and the club comes flying out of their hands. So anyway, keep that in mind when you're dealing with covering up. Um, and again, an Under Armour top layer can also be good for protecting from the sun as well. Uh, but, you know, typically a collared shirt when you go to the golf course. I wouldn't steer away from that. But at the same time, you don't have to go out and buy a whole wardrobe for the golf course unless that's just what you want to do. So a round neck shirt is fine. Again, make sure you got some kind of sun protection because you're out there in the sun a lot. Hat, some kind of a hat. Get them something cool, something that they want to wear. Um, a lot of little kids will wear kind of like a flat bill hat, but then they'll tuck their ears up underneath the flat bill. So that's kind of cool. They like doing that. Um, make sure that they're comfortable. They're going to be swinging. A lot of times you'll get a pair of pants or something like that and they, they you know, go to school or they walk out the door and they don't have a belt on. You want to ask them, hey, are those pants fitting quite right? Because again, you're going to be swinging and hitting golf balls. You don't want to see them constantly pulling up their pants. So maybe you might need to get them a little belt or something like that. Um, you want to check if, see if there is a dress code. A lot of courses are pretty lenient when it comes to what they allow people to wear. But if they have a dress code and it's listed on their website or the information you get from the golf shop is that they prefer their customers to wear a certain dress code, then just go with that, right? I mean, you don't have to push back on that. You can oblige and just carry yourself that way. But again, don't go breaking the bank. You know, find something that's comfortable and something that's fun for the kids to wear so that they're out there. When it comes to the equipment, like I've said in previous videos, you may want to just start them out with a double-sided putter, especially if they're little. So I've got my little putter right here. They may want to start out with something that's double-sided because you don't know if they're going to swing left-handed or right-handed. Right here, you've got a, um, a saber, and you can swing this right-handed and left-handed as well. So when they're starting out and they're little, you don't really know if they're gonna be better right or left-handed. So I wouldn't be buying a whole bunch of equipment. Maybe just get them a double-sided putter like this one, okay? Um, the next step may be a double-sided chipper, something that they can actually hit little shots in the air and maybe they can chip from both sides of the ball. So when it comes to equipment, keep it really, really simple and start leaning on the advice of the friends and the network that you're gonna build at the golf course. Talk to the local professionals, Find out if they have loaner equipment. You don't have to have uh, brand new golf clubs to be able to play. You can take hand-me-down stuff. Um, you want to make sure that it's, you know, just check it out. Make sure that the shaft hasn't rusted. Make, you know, take the club head and the shaft, twist it. Make sure that the shaft is staying stuck in there. Ask your local professional to help you with that kind of stuff. If you've got equipment that's too big, a lot of places will be able to cut the shaft down and install a grip. And they'll also be able to install grips that are appropriate for your junior. So you don't have to go to the full extent of, of what Tony Finau has here, but the equipment that he has in his bag is specifically chosen for a purpose to help him. Okay, so that's all you have to think about with your kids is the purpose is for them to what? Have fun. Okay, they need to be wearing clothes that they can have fun and they can run around in if they want to. Right. They need to in order to have fun, they're going to have to be able to withstand the elements. If it's cold or windy, you're going to want to make sure that they're dressed for that outside. OK, so uh, again, 
Please subscribe to the channel if you like the information. If you've got questions, just comment. I'll respond as quickly as I can to help you navigate this world of golf. Um, hopefully you're enjoying the videos and I'll see you in the next one.